very warm welcome. We're going to be discussing everything monsters today. I thought I'd start. I spent the first 10 minutes writing down some, uh, some monster jokes to whip you all into a, <laughs> to a monster frenzy. Um, OK, why couldn't the monster buy a pair of shoes? Why? Didn't have feet. Because he had a big foot. Oh. Ah, that's gold. It's not too late to get that in the movie. <laughs> it, it's, uh, <laughs> it does get worse. Okay. okay. Why did the monster transfer jobs so easily? Um, I don't know. Because of the clause in his contract. Ah, that's <laughs> terrible, oh, isn't it? Much worse. Nice. Um, last one, I promise. Why, uh, why couldn't the monster get into his apartment? This one needs a bit of work. Okay. Still, okay. <laughs> the others didn't. Yeah, yeah. No, the others are great. <laughs> Why couldn't the monster? <laughs> no, I haven't. Is, there is a punchline. Okay. okay. He couldn't get into his apartment because of the Loch Ness monster. Oh. He, yeah. Got except it. Except that. Okay. We'll work on that. Well, uh, <laughs> I wrote down applause and I got a little. Oh, look bit at that. You uh, wrote down applause. Yeah, I wrote applause, applause wrote for applause, applause for those jokes. <laughs> It's very professional. <laughs> okay, so uh, so thankfully you're not here to listen to these jokes. Uh, we're actually here to meet the creators of this, which will either be awkward silence or trailer. <laughs> so uh, we're very lucky to have the director of Monsters University, Dan Scanlon, and Corey Ray, the producer. Hello. Um, Maybe ask you to introduce a bit more about yourselves in a minute, but the first question is, how does it feel seeing that? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's great. It's, it's fun to watch the trailer with an audience. I don't think we've ever done that. I know. Um, yeah, we're just so, we're so excited that the movie's done. We spend um, so much time working on it. We spend right. uh, almost five years working on each individual film at, at Pixar. Right. And uh, so to finally have the movie coming out uh, in you know, two days yeah. uh, and to be able to share it with the world is very exciting. It's cool. Wow. And from a production point of view, <laughs> the, the amount of work that, that goes into that, is that a relief to see how amazing it is? It is. It's, uh, and it's, it's uh, been interesting the last few weeks. It's, it's almost bittersweet when it's over because you do spend <clears> so <throat> much time with, with uh, the crew and, and so much time on the production. And it's a little bit of a, an odd departure when it's over. So uh, we're still experiencing, experiencing a little bit of that. Yeah. But, um, but super excited to get it out to the world. Can't, can't wait. Great. So we may open up some questions with maybe 20 minutes left. So I was hopefully going to go through mm -hmm. some some uh, topics. Um, I was kind of interested in how you arrived at Pixar and your journey and a little bit about your education and inspirations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in my case, I you know, always loved to draw, got really into film and animation when I was young. Uh, I, I went to college in Ohio studying, actually studying illustration, and um, kind of fell off film for a while. And, uh, but then I got a job at uh, this company in Ohio called Character Builders that did a lot of direct-to-video Disney sequels, The Little Mermaid 2 and 101 Dalmatians 2 and all those. <laughs> and, um, but it was great. It was a great uh, experience because we had to make the movies for half the budget and half the time. And, and um, you know, frankly, even knowing that you were making a movie that people didn't want to exist, you know, that, that people didn't want those movies. And, and, uh, but I liked that. I liked yeah. kind of the... Uh, underdog nature of, all right, we're going to try to make these as good as we can. Um, and then I left uh, there, and I applied to uh, as many places as I could because I just wanted to try uh, to move to California to, to, to try to really go for it. And I applied at all these different places. And I applied at Pixar as sort of the joke one, like, <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to get my name on a form somewhere. <laughs> And uh, no one replied to me except for Pixar. And it was such a great example of just go for whatever. Go, right. go for everything you want, because uh, you never know. And luckily, they, they brought me in to work on uh, Cars, the first Cars. And uh, in, in my interview with Joe Ramp, who was a great story artist there, he, um, he said, oh, you're from the Detroit area. I bet you're really good at drawing cars. I didn't know what the movie was going to be about yet. And I said, oh, to be honest with you, I hate drawing cars. I don't know how to do it. That's why I'm leaving Detroit, and I couldn't draw a car to save my life. And then he said, the, the movie is called Cars? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. Um, but, uh, and so, yeah, Monsters, Inc., the first one actually came out the first month that I worked at Pixar. And I got to go to the wrap party, and it was just such a, a dream to, to be there. 
and then worked on Toy Story and, and made my own live action film feature called Tracy on the weekends <coughs> with other people from Pixar, um, just as practice writing and directing a feature on my own. And I think that that helped me get this job. So the inspiration was Disney when you were a child, uh, sort of growing up with the old classic, obviously. Uh, was, it, a lot of it was more Warner Brothers, Chuck Jones, Tex Avery, that kind of stuff. But I was a fan of the shorts Pixar was doing, and I was a fan of uh, Ardman, the shorts that Ardman was doing at the time. But. That's great. Uh, and Corey, in terms of producing, did you start small and then work into big scale? Yeah, yeah. I you know, started at the, at the very bottom. I got in uh, at, on the ground floor about 20 years ago when uh, we used to produce commercials. And um, I applied for an assistant to the executive producer of the commercials group and, uh, and went up against a couple of internal people. And I had a little bit of a writing background and, and project management background. So somehow uh, they hired me. And, uh, and then I kind of quickly worked my way up in the commercial group and started producing commercials um, until Toy Story came out. And um, they took all of our people that were in the commercials group, all 12 or 13, just to finish Toy Story. And then uh, once it was released, and uh, Disney said, well, maybe we might help, you know, if you want to make another movie, maybe. Um, so that's when we kind of closed up shop in the commercial group. And I moved over and started working on A Bug's Life as the animation manager. Okay. So that was my first feature film. And then... Uh, Worked on a bunch since then, and this is my first full producing gig. I was the development producer on Up, but uh, just for the first year. And uh, so, yeah. Well, what's really astounding, I think, uh, watching Pixar movies is the, the, crowd, the incredible amount of detail and love and passion that goes into those films, and also how complex it must be from the beginning of a storyboard through to the finished piece. But uh, just on the little bit on that process, do you still traditionally begin with the drawings and the gag drawings, the way that the old Disney films were made and the old Warner Brothers films. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. We did uh, over 200,000 storyboards for this film. So, Oops. for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't make up my mind. Um, yeah, well, we'd still do a ton of hand-drawn stuff. Yeah. And even our storyboards. I mean, when I started on Cars, our storyboards were completely hand-drawn on paper and right. pasted to the wall, and we pointed at them with an old stick. And, you know, it feels like a... <laughs> Uh, incredibly outdated thing now, but yeah. the world changed fast, and now we're uh, drawing on Cintiqs. And, right. Um, but, but, you know, in the art department, people still yeah. draw on paper totally. every now and then. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I guess because, uh, because the actual sort of process of these animation and rendering is, is very sort of expensive, and you, you really try and get the lockdown on these uh, finished animatics to begin with, so you pretty much got the whole story working before you move. At, at least segments of it, you know what I mean? We, we, we certainly put the story reels up over and over again um, a lot the first two years at, at least, like every three months. We put them up, we show them to the internal kind of brain trust, um, all the directors at Pixar, then we, they give a bunch of notes, we tear them down and we start all over and we do that uh, every three, three months or so. And, um, and then, you know, slowly, we, and, and along with that we do design, we start design. Uh, pretty early on as well, production design, and then it kind of gets into production from there. So you're kind of building everything up bit by bit, exactly, but occasionally yeah. going back in. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so I guess you took this template, but then you also thought we want this idea for a sequel, but we don't want a sequel, we want a prequel. How did that come about? Uh, about five years ago, we started thinking about it for the first time. Just, just the idea that we loved these characters and, and wanted to see if there was even an idea there worth doing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a bunch of us got together, including uh, John Lasseter and Pete Docter, who wrote the original, or I mean, uh, directed the original film. Uh, the original writers were there. Um, and we, we thought if we were going to do a story with these characters, we wanted to do something that explored their relationship more. And that was really the, uh, where we got the idea of, well, we should go back in time and actually see how the relationship uh, developed. And um, obviously, from that idea, we loved the, the entertainment possibility of college, Monster College. But the real heart of it for us was when we realized we could tell this story about Mike. And um, the, mo the movie is, is very much Mike's story. It's, it's a movie about these guys coming together, but our main character this time is Mike. And, and um, we found that prequels are tough because you more or less know how the movie's going to end and that everyone's going to survive. Um, 
And, uh, and so we wanted to tell a story where knowing the ending at the beginning of the movie was a good thing. We wanted to tell a story about a character who uh, doesn't get everything he wants in the end. There are so many movies that say, if you work hard and never give up, everything will always turn out great. And, uh, and even though that's a great message, it's just sadly it's not always true. And so many of us had experienced that in our weird paths to, to, to our careers, uh, that we had had these big dreams that were kind of dashed. And at the time, it seemed devastating. But we look back on it now and, and realize, well, it actually led to something better. And we wanted to tell that story. So it's, it's really the story of Mike um, desperately wanting to be a scare more than anything in, in his life, and then the audience knowing he's headed for kind of a disaster. Uh, that seems so interesting to us, to tell a story that was a little controversial and we hadn't quite seen before. And that's where the, the gist of the idea came from. But it was sort of a wonderful surprise watching the film, thinking uh, that we do know kind of in a way what happens, but actually it's just this great snapshot of life on an American, in an American university. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever a, a slight worry that you were thinking, would this translate globally, mm -hmm. this idea of universities? Not for me. I remember growing up in the UK with programs like the Wonder Years, and yeah. I had this idea of what American college was like. Was like <laughs> That's what was funny as we started to talk to people. Well, number one, we yeah. thought, you really just need to know, uh, the, there's fraternities and sororities in the movie, but I think as long as you see them as teams, teams or clubs, it, it yeah. makes sense. But yeah. then the more people we talk to would say exactly what you said. Like, well, well, I know what it is from American movies. And I'd think, <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason I know what it is. Like, <laughs> the college I went to was nothing like that. We went to art school. They didn't have fraternities or sororities or any of that. Yeah. Um, so, so it seemed like it's being, it's being received well regardless of that. And I think, sorry. Oh, no, I was just, just going to say, because the film is, is, uh, is really about self-discovery. And it's really about that, that time in your life when you're 18, 19 years old, um, kind of out on your own for the first time, figuring stuff out. And so we, we, you know, we, um, we have found that it still is a pretty universal story and a pretty universal message, even though it takes place on a college campus, if, even if that part isn't quite familiar with people. We think the story still resonates. It has this great bit where you introduce to all these different frat parties that have all these different sort of personalities. I think we may have a, a clip, the okay. ROR trailer, <laughs> of uh, meeting one of the other sort of gangs on campus. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to do, uh, okay, initiation points? We can show you initiation. I was going to ask you if oh. this was how you, if this was your initiation ceremony for, Pix <laughs> for Pixar. <laughs> right, yes. Okay, so we'll run the other one. Up. Cool. Just on the characters, it looks like you had a, an absolute blast creating and designing these, because it's a world where anything yeah. can happen, right? Yeah. yeah. Totally. Oh, for sure. We, had a, we have a great uh, art department. Yeah. And, um, and you know, the first thing we really do is think about the characters themselves, what they need to be in order to tell the story. Right. And, um, and then we start designing them. And, and it is tough. In the case of monsters, it's, it's fun because it's, it can be anything. And it's hard because it can be anything. You know, it's hard to figure out what, what to hold your, you know, what to hold on to. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we had a great time with this, this team. We have a, a new character, um, uh, the Dean in the movie, Dean Hardscrabble, who had to be one of the most uh, terrifying um, scares of all time. And so we really wanted to design something that was really freaky looking. And, uh, <laughs> We got on the topic of sort of bugs. Bugs are creepy. And we, we found this thing. It's a giant centipede. It's a real thing that exists in the world. And we, we rented one. And, uh, and uh, they, they brought we it. We were going to buy one. Yeah. We weren't going to keep it. No. Yeah. And uh, they, they brought it into meetings in what looked like a plastic jar that had, had potato salad in it. Like it was so not official with a little bit of tape on it. I thought, this doesn't seem right that we're, one of the interns is taking care of this thing. And, and, um, and he, they said, the guy that brought it said, if it, if it bites you, you won't die, but you'll wish you were dead. So we would have this thing around all the time. But it was really great uh, to research, to have, have it there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Um, and it's also interesting because uh, the other world, the animation world, gives you uh, sort of the opportunity to make things move in completely different ways. And that's what I also loved about this film. It's, uh, you had the opportunity to play with short legs, long legs, yeah. millipedes, a giant. Right. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for the animators to really sort of get their teeth into it. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh yeah, I mean, animation-wise, it, it was Crazy. you know each one of these things. Once you develop a new-looking character, now you have to figure out how it moves, and it's and again, they're all things that we've we've never really seen before necessarily. Tentacles yeah. are very hard, uh, yep. apparently. For sure. Yeah, I think just the, the scope of this film and the, and the, the different body types, uh, it was actually one of the most challenging things about the film, um, technically, were just the different, the number of different types of monsters and the way that they moved and, and the locomotion of them. It was because there's, there's dozens and hundreds of, of monsters in each shot and um, they all move differently. So you have to, anim the animator has to animate Terry and Terry with tentacles and they have to animate Squishy that just kind of have a, has squishy legs yeah. and uh, Art, which who moves in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, he's sort of the purple, like the purple thing you saw in that. In that shaped guy. Thing. He, yeah. yeah, and that was great because the animators would almost kind of test themselves of who could come up with the weirdest thing for Art to do. And right. it was just very uh, fun to explore that. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, it's beautiful to watch. And I also think the other thing that stood out was the attention to, to detail, which is always there in these Pixar films. But I'd never seen anything like, uh, there, there was almost dust particles. I noticed uh, there's a part where Mike writes in his calendar and that the pen absorbs into the calendar. It's right. almost like it's, uh, that's incredible. I mean, how far can that technology go? I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. It's amazing. I, I think, you know, it's uh, the, the artist's, are really pushing themselves all the time. This isn't like Dan, I don't think Dan was in the review going, okay, now make sure that that marker really seeps in there. And it's, it's, it's everybody challenging themselves. And that's, you know, like, like this environment, it's, just, it's similar um, at Pixar. We, we're just always trying to, to push individually. All the artists are pushing themselves to do something cooler than last time or, or add that little touch at the very end of the shot. Um, and it's remarkable. I mean, it, it, and that is what all adds up to that, that incredible level of detail. Again, most of it isn't planned. Some of it is, um, and a lot of it just happens because the artists are who they are. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. So with way. Nemo, it was sort of water, and this, this particular problem may have been sort of tentacles and the amount of, of monsters on yeah, the shore. Yeah, it's kind of the amount of characters um, was the big challenge. Yeah. That and apparently backpacks. backpacks. <laughs> At some point, backpacks are really hard to Simulated simulate and yeah. put a backpack on a hairy creature. And, <laughs> and I felt bad because it's well, it's college. They they, they they don't wear clothes. So what else is going to show you that they're college students? Um, so it's not as sexy and exciting as a giant ocean of water and flames. But backpacks were tough. So <laughs> if you see a backpack, applaud. <laughs> And also, I think that the, the world of the university, uh, I was kind of intrigued as to, does it completely exist somewhere in a CG? How, how, what's the level that you went to to sort of uh, plan out this giant campus? Yes, a lot. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. we, we did have a, we had an actual model um, up front just trying to figure out the whole layout of the campus. And then, and then we did go ahead and put that into the computer. And mm -hmm. I mean, there's cheats here and there where we needed them. Um, for specific scenes, but but yeah, it was definitely, and that was painstaking, um, because the story has to drive that, and, and the story has to be to a certain yeah. point where you can say, great, this building is here, and this one's here, and then we'd say, hey, Dan, what, what, what's going to happen in this building? And he'd say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yet. We haven't Sounds figured like it out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, I, so it's, and things it's a need to move. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's great about the, all the, t the, the, um, sets department and, and everyone is they know that the story change trumps everything and, yeah. and sometimes it's sad sometimes you've worked really hard on something and you think that building can't be over there anymore we made right. this change we got to move that building or get rid of that building or get right. rid of that character and it's tough but I think people understand that it's all in favor of making a good story and nobody wants to just keep something in the movie because it's cool right. and um, and we worked hard on it yeah. you know they, they want it to be right yeah. So was, uh, to sort of going back to the story, was there one particular part that you may have been stuck on? Was it the third act or the middle act or the first? You know, um, think, well, thinking of it in acts, the middle, Yeah. probably. I think the middle was... Every, it's funny, every Pixar movie has <laughs> the, that, where you think, oh, this movie's going to have a tough first act or a tough third act. I think a tough middle is what you want. If you have to have something, <laughs> as long as the movie starts pretty good and ends yeah, pretty good. Right. Who cares what happens in the middle? You gotta go to the bathroom, get popcorn. But uh, it, the, the real danger is when you've got a screwed up third act because that's right. the whole point of the movie. Right. But it happens all the time and you, you, you just bang your head against the wall to get it working. 
Right. So it seems like it's such a process of getting the script writers, and then also there's this, uh, I guess there's this reality of when you get the, the guys in to do the voiceovers, there may be a chemistry or something that emerges from there which can springboard to, a, to another idea. So it's sort of organic in a way, but it also has so much writing on it, I guess. I mean, this, I, uh, I have a, a question on pressure, which I underlined three times, the word pressure, just to sort of hide it. wrote it in the form of a joke. In the joke. No, 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 it's not a joke. No more jokes. But, um, I mean, you, 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 you're a director of the, the most successful film company in, in history. How, is, is there a level of, uh, <laughs> is there a level of sort of pressure that you, you feel? Uh, you know, I think that we, yeah. we're pretty supported at Pixar. It's a very yeah. supportive place, and I, I always feel like we're kind of all in it together. Um, it's not competitive, you know. Yeah. Uh, we, we try not to look at our movies next to the other one and that right. type of thing. You know, everyone is so excited about whatever individual movie is coming out that you, I don't know, you, you really don't think about it as much. Uh, and, I, and I think we're trying to make movies that, that we like, you know, because at first, our first audiences are ourselves. It's the company. And um, we're trying to make a movie that, that, that we like. And we, we honestly believe and hope that if we do that, hopefully we'll connect with people. Rather than trying to judge what, you know, the world wants right now. I think that's always kind of a dangerous right. road to go down. Um, uh, but, uh, I, you know, I don't know. Everyone keeps asking me if I feel this pressure. I feel like I, I should <laughs> probably feel it. I do now. I think, I think part of it is that there's pressure at the beginning and because it, it's, you know, just getting the story off the ground in any way, shape, or form is the hardest part. And then there's no time. There's no time yeah. to think. If you're really moving forward, there's no time to even think about the pressure. It's, the, it's so crazy kind of how, how jam-packed yeah. production schedule is, even at, at four years. Um, it's, you, I don't know, it's, it's almost well, like you just put your head down and, yeah. ah! <laughs> but luckily we'll have plenty of time on Friday afternoon to refresh Rotten Tomatoes and... <laughs> I'm no, not doing that. I, I mean, <laughs> I definitely haven't seen a film where I've kind of like smiled all the way through it. It's just like a really that's enjoyable cool. film once you're, you're, you're into the world and that's it. So, uh, I don't envisage too many bad reviews, really. <laughs> Did you want to run the clip of the, uh, the ROR trailer? Because I think mm. it's interesting to talk about the little different uh, frat gangs that, right. that, cool. that appear. That seems like a real opportunity to develop those different personalities and characters yeah. within that. Yeah. Is that yeah. based on the <laughs> frat gangs when you were growing up? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think some of it is based on our own experiences and then just sort of those classic college archetypes yeah. with the monster twist on them. But yeah, I mean, that was the fun of having the fraternities and sororities in the, in the movie was to be able to just celebrate those kind of classic college cliches and, and types. I love the guy with the lisp. And uh, yeah. it's, uh, I don't know, I did used to hear Pixar stories that occasionally some of the traits of animators or people that work there found their way into the characters. Right. No one yeah. at Pixar with a lisp. No, not, not, that, I, no, not I th that I would say. No, but I, th I think Bobby Moynihan, who voiced yeah. the character of Chet, uh, yeah. kind of... He adds a lot. He to adds it. a lot to that. He came up with that, I think. I mean, he directed it, but yeah. it's kind of his thing. Yeah. It's so great. So now the, uh, the film is finished, uh, you get this chance to maybe take a, a bit of a breather before you begin to sort of build up the energy to, to take on something else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Take some time off. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And then, yeah, come back and, and then we'll go into development and, uh, and see uh, if we can come up with another idea. That's fantastic. Another movie, yeah. In terms of questions, we only have sort of 15, 20 minutes left, so if anyone would like to... Uh, Queue up. That would be fantastic. Hey. Hey there. Um, I read that this is the first Pixar movie that makes full use of ray tracing. I'm wondering if you could discuss mm. how that affected the creative process or the movie making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, global illumination and, and that we kind of did a bunch of R&D at the beginning and we did, we'd used that for the first time on, on this film. Yeah, um, and, and, and it's beautiful. It. I mean, we love the look of it. it. It works really well for this particular film. It allows us to, or allowed me to see uh, scenes lit kind of quicker and, and yeah. more specifically, right. uh, which allowed us to tell a story with light in a, in a way that we, we really wanted to do, right. um, uh, which, which uh, you know, which is, just makes everything easier. I, 
I felt and Pete Doctor was the um, uh, exec, executive producer on this film, and he was a big mentor for me the whole time, and he would come in and once a week and, and look at character designs and, and, and animation. And it had been 12 years since he did his film, and they did it on a Texas Instrument computer with, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, he would look at what I get to see, and he'd go, you're so lucky. It's so easy. <laughs> you know, when he would see character designs, they were sort of frozen in this weird <laughs> shape and, and made out of simple things. And I'd see them, they'd be posed in a production pose with, yeah. like, a drop shadow on it. I'm like, sure, that looks good. <laughs> so easy. Sorry. That, it's true. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for, so much for coming. Um, so the past three out of four Pixar movies have been either sequels or prequels. Um, so my question is why and what are the challenges of coming up with new stories when there's already existing material? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of lucky to be able to make more movies than we, we could years ago. And, and we're able to go back into these worlds and tell new stories with existing ca characters and, and worlds that, that we created a while ago. So. Um, we're actually excited to go back into a lot of these worlds, and we're also excited to tell original stories. We're just happy to be doing both. Um, but I think certainly sequels and prequels offer a another challenge because it's um, you you know you have to kind of deal with predictability and 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 everything that goes before. Um, and come up with, with brand new ideas that will keep the audience interested. So it's challenging, but I, I think we're really glad that we're able to, to do both yeah. and move forward doing both. We finally so. have that, that luxury. But it, it, sequels can be tough. I mean, we said it's like, it's as if someone took the game chess and said, okay, you, you use all these pieces, but come up with a different game that's just as good as chess, but isn't chess. But you can't <laughs> change the characters that much. It's, it's this other yeah. challenge. This kind of goes back to that pressure question earlier. So it seems like the tradition at Pixar is to have co-directors of past feature films or short films step into the director's chair, such as Pete and Andrew. So how much did co-directing that short film for Cars help you step into the director's chair this time? And also, what does that say about Pixar to have that much trust and confidence in somebody with their immaculate track record? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> pressure you guys are putting on. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I co-directed Mater and the Ghost Light, which was a short on the DVD several years ago, but with John. So, I mean, you couldn't, couldn't really have a better teacher. Um, it's different than making a, an original short. Uh, the, those shorts, by the time we do those, the whole team you're with are so good in that world. And the animators know how to animate those characters. That, that ship kind of sails itself. It's a really great jumping off point. But it is a whole different world than, than making a, a feature. I mean, most of the assets already exist. Right. Uh, I think we made a lamp for that. That was like <laughs> the only thing we made. I look back on it a little bit. I was probably starting around going, I co-directed a movie. And I realized, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> you kind of did. But um, you know, yeah. But uh, uh, I, I actually think that the more of the years in story are, are yeah. where the trust comes from, because story is the most important thing when directing a movie because all your decisions go back to the story. You don't have to know everything about animation or lighting right. or how the computer works. You just <laughs> have to know how to explain the emotions that you want and, and to know how to tell a story. So I think actually making the feature film I made on my own was probably where more of the trust came from because you know, that was something that I, that I they made that was a feature length right. project. I just wanted to um, comment about the Monsters University website being excellent PR, um, and that that was great. <laughs> and um, I'm wondering, with the release of the movie, if there's going to be any new things up on the website, uh, surprises. Mm. Oh, man, that is a great question. Robin? We, <laughs> Sorry, our PR. Are you here? I know. Uh, um, I, I think probably so, yes. I, I think they're going to try to keep that active for a little while longer. I, to be honest, we've been uh, just traveling around Europe the last few weeks. Um, Doing Humble press brag. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Humble brag. It's no big deal. Oh, that's bragging, Europe. really? Shit. Um, yeah, anyhow. Uh, but, uh, so I'm not sure what's happening uh, with it, but I, I would imagine that they're going to put some cool new stuff on there, I hope. It is great. I love it. Yeah, me too. Along the lines of sequel, prequel, I was surprised when I looked up that the original movie came out in 2001. And so I think about how much changed in my life since that time, because I was in high school when it came out. So what is the challenge when you take, for instance, that 
large amount of time between audiences and maybe some of the original viewers are now going into college themselves. And then as a quick follow-up, is there a door open for a return of Mike and Sully after this? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, the, the fact that, um, you know, it's 12 years later and a lot of kids were six or seven or when they saw Monsters, Inc. and are now going to college, that totally is a, is a happy accident. I know that probably sounds uh, like a lie, but it's not. Um, it really was, it, the timing did work out that way. And we, we didn't even know what the release, d release date of the movie would be when we started talking about it. So um, that was really a happy accident that's, that's been fun. I mean, we did a lot of screenings for, um, at colleges and universities around the country, and it was really fantastic to, to see the feedback and, and just of kids who uh, kind of you know, grew up with Mike and Sully and now they're at school. So yeah, and we're going to wait fun. another 60 years to make <laughs> Monsters, Monsters Retirement, retirement home, home so that you can all <laughs> relate to that. Uh, we really don't have any idea for what happens next. Um, we, don't, we don't know yet, yeah. if, or if. No, no plans yet, yeah. yeah. Is this the first G-rated college movie? And is that, <laughs> yeah. Was that like Hopefully a, it's a the, good challenge? Or? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, 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 it is uh, for the obvious reasons, but we realized early on that what John Lasseter called kind of the ruckus nature of college, we, as long as you had monsters kind of falling down and smashing things and eating garbage out of the garbage can, it kind of felt like, oh, that's a pretty wild party. I don't need to know what's in the red cup, although there are red cups. Um, and, uh, but, but it, you know what, in some ways though, I think the bigger issue uh, was that college, is what college movies are about. And I think that that was a tougher sell in a way. Right. College movies are about rebellion and, 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 and rebelling against the system. And, and right. uh, without giving anything away, I mean, these guys do that a lot. They have to, and it has to be about, uh, you know, kind of bucking the system a little bit. And I almost feel like that is more subversive and, right. and harder for people to swallow because, yeah, a college movie for parents would be about kids that go to school and do great, get great grades, and don't have any problems. <laughs> and, and, you know, this can't be that. Right. Thanks, thanks. Cool. This is a question for Dan. You mentioned it earlier, and then you alluded to it, and you're, you're talking about your career path, that you made this movie on your spare time with other Pixar people. I wonder if you could tell a little more of that within the context of Pixar culture. Like, are there always these creative, ambitious people doing these side projects, or were you really like driven to figure out how you could kind of take your career to the next level? Oh, I think that's what's great about Pixar is there's yeah. a lot of people doing that. Yeah. There's always Very artists strong. making their own comic book and people doing their own thing, and, and I think Pixar is really supportive of it, yeah. um, you know, as long as it's handled correctly. And, uh, because it just, it's all about, like here, I mean, it's all about allowing people to get better and explore, and what better way and for them to, um, you know, do it on their own a little bit too. Right. Uh, uh, I think a lot, a lot of people are doing those kind of things, and it, it does help you, yeah. you kind of grow. With both of you having been with Pixar since before the Disney acquisition and afterwards, mm -hmm. and with the purchase of the Star Wars franchise ringing in our ears, mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of freedoms and how did the production process and creative process change pre and post acquisition? Mm. Um, I mean. Obviously, the biggest thing was, you know, access to the characters and 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 making um, more films, sequels, prequels uh, with those characters. That was kind of the biggest win um, for us because we really wanted to to be able to do that. Um, but creatively, in terms of being there, um, I, it's we're still so singular, singularly focused. I can't say that word um, on just making great movies that. Um, we haven't noticed any big changes. I mean, when we're heads down making a movie, it's the same. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to, you know, do do better each time, and we're trying to tell better stories and use technology in a different way. But in terms of the culture, uh, nothing has changed, honestly. Um, so I don't. Yeah, yeah it's been bigger, good in that way. We're a bigger we're, company, but we're pretty autonomous. You know. I mean, Pixar itself is an autonomous part of the Disney Corporation. So it and it does feel like that still. Pixar is known for having great technical prowess and then also artistic vision. So you have these two groups of people with, you know, just really incredible talent. How do they mash up against one another where you have people able to do something but necessarily not having the vision there, but you have, or you have people having the vision but not necessarily the technical ability? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that is one of the beautiful things about Pixar. It was started with, 
you know, by John Lasseter and, and Bill Reeves sitting in a room together, the artist and the, and the technical director, kind of sitting there helping each other solve problems, creative problems and technical problems. And I think that's kind of the basis of, of what Pixar, you know, what we were built on um, with kind of that mentality. And so we work really hard to make sure that that those people do collaborate. I mean, we have the the folks who are building the characters and, and rigging the characters really in the same room with the animators to figure out how best to do it. And the best shows and the best departments and the best movies are the ones who do that collaboration the best. And you have to have, it's it's so key because it, you know these films are exactly that. It is a true marriage of, of, of art and technology and, and you have to have that collaboration. And so a lot of my job as a producer is actually to make sure that that's happening and that it's happening in, in all departments and that all departments are talking to one another. Um, so it, it is, it's, it's really important and it requires a, a fair bit of, of work and to make sure that, that we keep doing that. And Corey so. really made that happen on this film. It was a big part of, of, uh, right. of what you brought to the film <laughs> is that, combina that, yeah. that uh, working together. I feel yeah. like we really had departments working together in, in such a special way on this film and I, and I think it shows in the, yeah. in the final film. Thanks for coming, this is such a treat. Um, your movies have such attention to detail, and after five years and that amount of focus, are there still things that you look at and you say, I wish we'd done this, uh, or do you, get to, do you get to do it all? <laughs> yeah, uh, boy, I gotta say, with five years, you kinda get to do it all. Like, sometimes you, <laughs> almost to a, a nightmarish degree, you watch <laughs> each shot so many times with a room full of people looking for the tiniest little mistake and, um, you know, it's not that I'm saying the movie's perfect or anything, but you, as far as those details, I mean, really everybody just combs over them. Although it is funny, Lee Unkrich told me, he said, wait till the movie comes out, though. People will find stuff. And they're like, but we were in a room full of people looking at every little dot. And he's like, they'll find something. And it will be huge because you were so busy looking at the one, you know, frame that turned off for a right. frame that you'll miss the fact that, you know, he said in Toy Story 3, I, I don't think he'll mind me saying, Toy Story 3, somebody pointed out that at one point Andy is running around with Woody or something and the camera pans over, the entire bed is shoved halfway into the wall. And he's like, <laughs> we watched this a million times and called out the tiniest little stuff and we missed that. So keep an eye out for our giant mistakes. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, um, it's interesting about the communication thing a little bit because I know that the original atrium at Pixar was built so that everyone could sort of meet, eat together, bump into each other and, and exchange ideas. And now it's, it's a far bigger company in a way. Does that still happen or is it a case of sort of making a point of leaving your office, walking around and, and interacting? Yeah. No, I mean, it really does yeah. still happen. And, uh, and the bathrooms, that's the key. It's the, it's the food, but it's also the restrooms. That's where you meet people. Yeah. And St St Steve <laughs> insisted on putting them all in the middle. And we, yeah. we, you know, when we were about to move into the Emeryville campus from Point Richmond, we were just up in arms, like, what do you, how, we can't walk that far to the restroom, and, uh, but it actually works, uh, and, and so, while we have a few buildings, each building is kind of set up that way, so it does, it, it really does work. We, I, at the very beginning of this film, we were in an outbuilding, kind of down an alley a little away, when we were in early development, and um, we remember the difference in moving back to um, the main building, how great it was to see everybody again and, and, and not be isolated like that. So mm -hmm. it is really important. You run into people all the time yeah. and, and it just, it, it, it makes you, you know, communicate and talk to people that you otherwise wouldn't have seen. So uh, it's quite effective. Yeah. Steve's a smart guy. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess uh, we sort of talk a little bit about Steve, but uh, it's sort of yeah. like that things must have changed a little from that aspect as well. When, uh, and also with John, because now he's sort of overseeing feature mm -hmm. animation in, uh, down in LA, and then he yeah. still manages to, what, what's he his does. working day like? It must be incredible. Yeah, it's crazy. He's <laughs> Superman, for yeah, sure. Uh, we, none of us really quite know how he does it, but, um, but he does, and he's hands-on. It's not like he's just coming in and he's actively working on, on all of the films and the shorts and everything at the studio every day. Um, I think you know he goes down to to Disney one one day a week or 
two days sometimes. But um, but yeah, he, he we checked in with him at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, um, for a couple of hours and showed him all stages of production and and because we because it's really important to get his his genius eye on things and and to get feedback from him. So. And he still, you know, he gives He's, great notes. I yeah. mean, he, he because he has a distance from it yeah. too that he can really judge. You know, because we've been so focused. Right. Yeah. I did also notice that uh, there was a recent announcement that, that there's going to be a lot more features up till 2016, and uh, films such as Untitled Film Number Eight, <laughs> Untitled Film Number Nine. So, do you do you think one of those may be yours, or uh, uh, you hope so, or you'll pitch a new idea? Yeah. What, what I don't know. Wait, what year? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do the math. Oh, well, let's see. A year long vacation, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we don't we don't know yet. We'll have to. We'll see, hopefully. There's a lot, you know, yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff going on, and, yeah. and uh, it's, it's really going to, we have a lot of projects in the works, and then you have to see how they pan out, because even, even when you try scheduling them and say, yeah, we want this one to come out here, it's, until you get really into it, you're not sure that it's going to work at all, so um, you, there's a lot of shuffling that happens kind of before that, so. And in terms of the, the, the pitching of an idea, I, I kind of got the impression, is it, is it true that there's three ideas that you would take to John, particularly if you were going to work on a, on a short idea for a movie, that you would approach the brain trust with three sort of strong ideas and, and possibly one of those may, may make it? Is, is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is, especially the shorts, um, yeah. I think that is definitely how, and, and, it, and I think it was a suggestion from John because uh, yeah. I think it just opens the world a little more. And I think they get to see kind of more of the creative of an individual if they if they're not if these aren't folks who've directed before or something and coming out of animation or story and it's it gives them a, a wider view of the the total creativity of, of the person to kind of pitch three ideas and but it, it has been successful and yeah and, you know uh, putting all your eggs in one basket exactly too. exactly we've got time for two more questions is that yeah. okay cool with uh, several films in production concurrently how do they interact um, yeah. How do they interact? I mean, mostly on the creative front and getting yeah. getting feedback on the yeah. creative front. It's nice because you can take a little break from your own movie and your own problems and <laughs> go watch the rough reels of one of the movies that's coming out two years after you, right. and and give notes and 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 again share their problems for a moment. And selfishly, the thing that I like about it, and I think a lot of the directors do, is even as you are doing that, there's a small part of your brain going, does that make sense for my movie? Like when someone <laughs> says, is your hero really being challenged to the utmost degree or uses some crazy story you know, paradigm, right. you think, is my hero going through his worst <laughs> possible journey? And it, it's just something to get you, kind of get your mind. Yeah, it shakes things shake up a lot, up. yeah. So. Uh, so working at an animated film studio, what is it like watching an a animated film by a different studio? Mm. What goes through <laughs> your mind? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see that many of them lately. We've been so busy making our movie, we never go to movies anymore for that's the kinda, last that's like, four true. years. It's really Actually, sad. Because yeah. when I get home, I don't want to think about a movie. So instead, I watch three hours of Pawn Stars because it's <laughs> stupid and it will make me fall asleep. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. And uh, I got to start true. watching movies. Yeah. In, in a few weeks, we'll start watching movies again. Yes. But it's been a while. But yeah, you know, like anything, I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good and difficult yeah. all at the same time, right? When you're looking at, at kind of your work up against other people's work. or that, It's hard not to go there, right? And the it's studios, hard not to, the studio, yeah. they're all fans of all sorts exactly. of animation. I think yeah. people watch stuff and world, appreciate yeah. the work that's going into it. And, For sure. You know, and Absolutely. probably have friends that work at those studios. I mean, it's all... Yeah, it's, it's still a love. pretty small world. So. <laughs> Cool. It's, uh, yeah. it's been interesting trying to talk about the film without too many yeah. spoilers, but it definitely is uh, its an amazing film, and cool. you should really congratulate yourselves on that. Uh, and in future, I'll just open up the floor with about 59 minutes to go and just ask <laughs> questions yeah. instead, right? Because they were, uh, great. Cool. They were great, great questions. questions. So, yeah, thank all you. Right. Thank you very much Thanks. indeed. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks so thank much. you. Thanks.